this and welcome back to my opera channel. This week we are sticking to the French opera train, but we are doing a Christmas opera. More specifically, a French lyrical drama, which is the basically the French way of saying opera. Other than the fact that most of the opera takes place on Christmas, it has nothing to do with Christmas at all. But we are getting into the spirit nonetheless. Vertel by Jules Massenet. Yes. Werther, not Werther's originals. Libretto by a whole bunch of people, I don't know why. It is loosely based on the novel The Sorrows of a Young Werther by Goethe, which also happens to be a true story which started a brief but depressing nonetheless trend of suicide. Uh, whoops, spoiler alert. Something else that is special about this opera is that the leading lady is actually a mezzo and not a soprano, which means that there is no one dying on stage of tuberculosis. Yay! But we still got a brooding tenor, so I mean, it's still an opera. All right, enough small talk. Let's get right into this opera. Act one, a small German village named Wetzel. It's early July, wait for it, Badia, who has actually recently been widowed, is left with eight children, but we only really care about the two oldest ones, which is Charlotte and Sophie. Actually, we only really care about Charlotte, but Sophie's around a lot, so we'll keep her in this. The other six kids are practicing their Christmas carols. I remind you, it's July. Now, if you thought that you were into the Christmas spirit, I think Badia wins. It's finally warm in Germany, but their father's like, no, you must stay inside and prepare for the winter months. Winter is coming. That same fine summer's day, there is a ball in Wetzel? Wetzel. And escorting Charlotte, the oldest daughter, to the ball is Werther, a young brooding poet. We get a lot of poets in opera. They're very dramatic, just like us. Werther arrives to pick Charlotte up, and he is singing about how everything in their house pleases him. The trees, the wall, the corners, the shadows, and this creature of maternal nature. Werther begins to have some very strong feelings for Charlotte. They go off to the ball together, where they drink, they dance, they're very merry. Back at the house, while they're out at this ball, uh, Charlotte's fiance arrives, Albert. Uh, right. She's engaged to a soldier. Forgot to mention that. Awkward. So her fiance has just returned after being gone for more than six months and is shocked to find that she is not just waiting there for him. Just like Buttercup. Sorry, you're no Wesley Albert. Sophie comes and tells him to wait, not to worry, she will be back soon. Many hours later, Charlotte and and Werther starts strolling back towards the house. At this point, entranced with each other, Werther begins to confess his love to Charlotte and tells her how amazing she is and that she is great with kids and that is such a turn on. Charlotte at the same time is confiding in Werther how much she misses her beloved departed mother to which Werther answers, your beautiful eyes, your beautiful smile. You're just, you are so beautiful. Me. They really aren't listening to each other. Valtel continues with his own story. I love you, Charlotte. Will I ever see you again? She agrees. Hmm. And at that moment, Charlotte's father yells from inside the house, Charlotte, Albert is returned. Albert? <gasps> Albert. She explains to Valtel that she swore to her mother before she died that she would marry Albert. Valtel is crushed. He says, go keep your promise, but I will die. So dramatic, man. I mean, there are other fish in the sea. She leaves and Valtel cries out married to another man. End of act one. Act two. It's September. Everyone is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the magistrate's wedding. Charlotte and Albert have actually been married now for nearly three months and Werther has become their closest friend. Of course you're gonna want to kill yourself if you're watching her with her husband the whole time. Albert suspects that Werther may have some feelings for Charlotte since he seems always very depressed around her but isn't really sure yet. So he says to him, I can understand how difficult it is to lose someone so magnificent and wonderful as my wife. Valtel denies that there is any romantic attraction, fatal or not, to Charlotte. Sophie comes into the picture and says, Valtel, hey, you wanna dance with me? I'm so cute. No, Sophie, he's a good, decent man. He's not Lord Baelish, sorry. Valtel manages to find a moment alone with Charlotte and right away begins speaking of the love that he has for her and the amazing night that they walked home together and danced together. Charlotte isn't having she reminds Wiltel once again that she is a married woman and asks him to go away. Not forever, just until Christmas. Wiltel then begins to think about killing himself again. Man, seriously, that's not the way to get her to stay with you. Sophie comes back and tries to get Wiltel to dance with her again. He rejects her again and tells her that he is actually leaving and may never return. He leaves. Sophie breaks out crying. Charlotte and Albert find her. Sophie tells them what Wiltel says. He does love her, says Albert. And End of act two. Act 
three. It's Christmas Eve. Charlotte is home alone and she is reading letters that Vertera has written to her in the past. This is the famous letter scene. Sophie comes to cheer her up. That's kind of Sophie's job in this opera is just to cheer everybody up. Charlotte finally confesses that she fears she actually has made the wrong decision in marrying Albert and that she actually loves Vertel. Vertel then suddenly appears looking like a ghost. Sophia has left at some point, by the way. Vertel and Charlotte are reminiscing of all the wonderful things that they have done together. If it was reading poetry or playing the piano, all things that are very, very romantic and they should not have been doing because she is married to another man. Vertel once again confesses that he loves her. Vertel, we get it. We know. It's okay. He also tries to get her to confess that she loves him too. By this point, Vertel is getting very aggressive and Charlotte is torn between giving it to him or not. He then forcibly kisses her. She gets scared and runs away, telling him they will never see each other again. Ever this time. Never. Once again, Vertel has says that she has sentenced him to death. Albert returns and he knows that Vertel is actually back in town. He then questions Charlotte about this and their servant hands him at the same time a letter from Vertel saying that he is going away on a long journey and he is requesting to borrow some of his pistols. He sends the pistols to Vertel and the moment Albert leaves the room, Charlotte runs to try and save Veltel's life because she knows that he's actually going to kill himself. End of act three. Here we have a prelude. Cheers. Act four. Charlotte has arrived at Veltel's bedside but she is too late. He has already shot himself and begs her not to call for any help. He is just very happy to die in her arm which he does. And at the same time off go the kids Christmas caroling on the street. Merry Christmas. The end. That's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a better holiday season than these two did. If you would like to know more about this opera there is a great insight that I have linked down below with Antonio Papano which is one of my favorite conductors where he talks about all of the music behind this opera and you get to hear more of the arias and I think it'll be really great if you guys all want to check that out it is linked down below don't forget to like comment subscribe you can also follow me on the Instagrams and on the Facebooks all is linked down below have an amazing holiday season I'll see you before the new year until then go see an opera and have an amazing week and an amazing Christmas and I hope you had an amazing Hanukkah. I know I did other than being super super sick. Bye bye. Because the first time I actually really need this tea.